is absolutely committed to these good reasons, we like to think we're contributing to a community. And as a community, overall, some of the stuff we do makes a real difference to people around the world where democratized publishing is a very, very positive difference. Uh, it moves things forward, it uh, changes lives in a great way. So, what I'm anticipating is that Emmanuel's story will bring some of that to life for us. He'll tell us about things that happen in a very, very beautiful part of the world. If you haven't been, I recommend it highly. It's utterly delightful. Um, but also, very interesting things have happened there as well. So, no more for me. Emmanuel, the floor is yours. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, really good to be here in uh, London today. This is my first time here, but the, first, uh, the third time here, but the first time at Work in London. So, before I just begin with this presentation, I just want to uh, mention Work in London team, the organizers, the volunteers, because I believe they are doing an amazing job uh, today organizing this event. I know we organized the Work in Croatia last year. It, uh, it isn't an easy task. But I believe it is an important one to this kind of event. So, if you could just applaud for, for Work in London. Uh, I want just to stand by for an important announcement, so uh, I'm not an English native speaker, so if you don't understand everything, remember that uh, is better than if I would speak in Croatian. <laughs> so, ako želim da mogu na hrvatskom pričati, pa to nešto ništa ne zove. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you might. So, uh, things I love. Uh, first on, on top of my list is my, my son. Uh, this is uh, Luca, and as you can see, I'm his father. <laughs> so uh, I'm, uh, I'm using Luke as my inspiration every day. Um, a lot of things that I do, I do basically just to uh, take a look at a mirror one day and uh, uh, I try to spend as much time with him. Sorry, just a little sip. So as I said, he is my inspiration. Um, I do a lot of stuff. I try, try to do community work as well. And uh, I, at, at the end of the day, want to, to build a better world for him. Uh, I've been a designer for the past 14 years. And for the past 10 years, I was also working with WordPress. I do make a living out of WordPress, but I'm also specialized in designing touchscreen user interfaces. I run an agency with my brother. So, this is my brother. We actually love each other. That's just a, a photo op. Uh, our agency is called Blagonich Brothers. Um, he couldn't be here today because he's running a half marathon. So, Lucian, go get it. Uh, I'm, I like to think of myself as an activist. So, this picture is important to me. Why? Because two, two days ago, this organization from Croatia uh, celebrated that their 10th anniversary. They're working with uh, people with special disabilities. They're working with people that are older, that have autism. So I, I helped them from the beginning. And we basically installed WordPress for them. They use that as a platform to promote uh, things that they do. I also co-organized a meetup in Zagreb. This is our capital in Croatia with my brother. Uh, we had just uh, the last week our 11th meetup. And I was really privileged and uh, really happy that I could be a lead organizer for Work in Croatia last year. And just to, to say that, if you are planning to visit Croatia, we plan to have a work camp in Split. That's on the Dalmatian coast. It's in the first week of, of September. So uh, come join us. So you can still swim there. So Croatia, uh, three pictures that I uh, have taken just the, the last week. Uh, have you been to Croatia? Okay, a couple of you. Uh, Croatia has a lot of differences between Croatia and the United Kingdom. If you look at Croatia, it has a really cool coast, uh, a lot of natural parks. It's a beautiful country, but with uh, uh, with a comparison to United Kingdom, it is uh, 14 times less populated. It and three times more GDP than UK. 
So there are, because of that, a lot of differences when working with clients as well. We usually have way smaller budgets than you, you have here in the United Kingdom. And our clients basically are less educated than here in, in the UK. But nevertheless, they expect the same quality as uh, they can have here in the, in the United Kingdom. So this is a bit of a problem because if you get less paid, you don't get the equal opportunities like you could have here in London. So for example, if you're living in London and you're living in Zagreb, I think that you have better educational possibilities uh, living here. I started everything uh, around 15 years ago, and that back then we didn't have so much possibilities to learn stuff online. Uh, but nevertheless, we want to travel, we want to go to conferences in London, in Amsterdam, and that is all expensive. So we have to come up with an ideas of how to work with clients and have all these privileges that you might have here. So we basically have to, had to change our process, we had to adapt. For example, in our agency, uh, we deliver only one to two main templates in Photoshop. We don't design everything in Photoshop before we even go to the second uh, front-end front -end, uh, stage. And we design that only as a desktop version. So this is basically that the way that we changed uh, and how we changed our, our process of designing websites. And basically we prepare other templates uh, in HTML and all of them are responsive and are responsive to various breakpoints. We don't define breakpoints in the beginning, but we define break, uh, breakpoints uh, along the way. And things we prepare like wireframes, we use only on our own process so they don't have to be as precise as when we are showing them to clients. Uh, but this is not the Croatia biggest problem. Uh, we have a lot of problems like unemployment uh, and economy and poverty. And the last one on this list is corruption. But I don't think that this is the lesser problem of this, these other three. I, I, as an individual, cannot battle unemployment. I cannot battle economy. Uh, I cannot battle poverty. But maybe somehow I could battle corruption. And especially the lack of vision. Because I think that politicians in Croatia don't have the vision because we are, remember, a young democracy. We didn't have a country 25 years ago, so we are still learning how to be a democratic country. We are on the right path, but we are not there yet. And because all, all of that, we are lacking in transparency. And this is one of my favorite quotes uh, that Dalai Lama said, a lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. So why is transparency important? <coughs> First of all, we as a citizens want to know how is our money spent. We want to ask questions and get answers to that questions. And we are not getting that if it lacks transparency in the process of this two-way communication between the citizen and the local and national governments. And we want to be involved in the decision-making process and because on top of all that we want to build a better democracy. So, if I told you that, as a democracy, I can't remember when we protested the last time on streets to make things happen, you, you might be shocked. Uh, but that's, that's true. We, we like Facebook protests. We, we got a lot of likes when we had to protest online, so we are really experts in that. And having this two-way communication helps understand the problems of running a city and country. So this is a win-win situation for both sides, both the city and the national government and the citizens. So in 2014, uh, GONG, that is our association that uh, oversees the election process back from the 90s, where our election processes were much worse than they are today, they conducted three surveys. Uh, the first one was in 2009, then uh, the second one in 2011, and the third one in 2014. And the average score for all the cities that were covered with that service, and that, that is around 130 cities in Croatia, this is how much cities we have, uh, is 5.9. And that's not a really good score if you, you see that there is a 5.9 average score out of 10. And 
even though 90% of local governments uh, have their website, they just don't publish the information that are they required to, to do so by law. And there is no consequences, so obviously this is the reason why they don't do that. And the good thing is that Rijeka was the most transparent city in Croatia in each survey. So in this seven years period, we had one city that was always the most transparent one, and at the last um, transparency survey that, that they got the score of 9.6, so this is uh, really good. So we said, let's change things with Rijeka. And Rijeka is an industrial city. Rijeka is the uh, largest port in Croatia, but also it's the third largest city there with around 130,000 people, which is still 50 times smaller than London. But for the Croatian, this is a good thing because we have only 4.3, 4.4 4 million people. So uh, being a third larger city and being the most transparent one really helped us uh, get this story going. And above all that, Rijeka is truly a multicultural city with, with so many nationalities living there side by side. And when we got this war uh, of independence in the 90s, Rijeka was not part of this uh, war territory. And definitely Rijeka is the most transparent city and that all came to place when a, a week ago Rijeka was selected as Croatian a city for European capital of culture in 2020. So this is really an amazing and important work they do there. And why Rijeka would, wanted WordPress, why were they interested in doing uh, the new website above uh, WordPress as a platform? They know WordPress because they used it in a couple of smaller websites that just go to wordpress.org, uh, download it, and after that uh, they install it easily. They could uh, change the text, they could change the content really easy. So this is uh, their main decision on going uh, to, to WordPress as a platform. And the, the other one was that basically the Croatian community from 2013 today uh, to, to this day grows every day, every, every month. And this is really important when you are uh, trying to, to see what platform would you use in the future. And definitely one of the reasons is because it's open source and they wanted to open source everything when the, the work is done. So I really believe that WordPress revolutionized publishing. Coming from Croatia in 2003 when WordPress came out, um, it really helped a lot of people publish their content, publish their, their ideas, and this especially is true when you have countries that are, I don't know, somehow lacking in democratic values. Uh, so the WordPress really revolutionized publishing and we wanted to, to revolutionize something else, else as well. So we wanted to somehow help transparency issues that we are facing in Croatia in this two-way communication between cities and uh, and uh, citizens. But at the end, we wanted to uh, build a platform. So Rijeka came to us and asked us to, to develop their new website. And at one point, we saw the opportunity to do something even more, even better, because by building a platform, we didn't want to build a website just for one city. We wanted to build a platform for all the cities in Croatia, because all the cities have the same problems. And the big thing, the big problem, was that we didn't have political ties. And by saying that we didn't have any political ties means that we didn't work with any political parties, government, institutions, and so on. And people usually in Croatia uh, see that as a problem, but personally, I don't see it as a problem. I see it as being able to be as much transparent as I could for this, this entire process. And by saying that we had no political ties means that back two, two, two or three years ago, I was very critical of our national government that just wanted to create a new website. They asked for open source technologies, but they finished up with a proprietary solution. And they used a copy of your own gov.uk as a platform to, to build their own website. And it was awful, and it still is. I think that they should do better work than they did three years ago. Uh, and the problem there 
these past four years, the, the same party was uh, on our national government, the leading party, and in Rijeka. So, could we work with Rijeka while we are criticizing the national government? But Rijeka said, we don't, uh, we don't want that. We, we want to work with you because we believe in you. We, we believe that you could get us the, the thing that we need. So, our approach was, we definitely wanted to make a better city website. We wanted to open source everything. This was one of our main reasons for deciding to, to work with Rijeka. We wanted to design it in the open. So never before anyone in Croatia working with the institution of the government had uh, done a blog that will basically document all this process. And this blog is uh, important for a couple of reasons. And one for, of the reasons is that by doing an educational blog, basically this helps the community and this helps the whole web design community, not only the WordPress community. So this is one of our reasons that we wanted to, to work on with this project. And when we conducted interviews with the citizens of Rijeka, we asked them, so uh, do you want this site to be accessible to, to everyone? And around 25% of them said yes, which is a really low number. And this is one of things that we just didn't listen to the citizens because we, we, thought, we thought that accessibility really matters because this in some, some way will help all those people with special needs that, that don't, don't have the, the same vision as we do, that uh, have uh, other sort of uh, disability problems and so on. And the most important thing maybe is that we wanted everything disclosed. So we didn't want to go someday and uh, to be asked by people that you did uh, this job, it was overrated, overpriced and so on. And Rijeka said, hey, we want that too. So a couple of questions arise. How to even start working with Rijeka without this public, public bid? Uh, public bid? Uh, so in Croatia, there is, a, there is a, a price range. So everything above 20,000 pounds should be put on public bid. And this is OK. But we don't have the resources and we don't have the, I don't know, ways of telling which offer is the best one, because we are always uh, having the smallest, uh, smallest price as, a, as the best offer uh, available. And this is not something that they wanted in this uh, situation, because a couple, uh, couple of times it really happened like that, that there were a couple of uh, normal bids, and there is, uh, I don't know, a company that wanted just to dump the price, and it had a price 20 times, 20% uh, of the entire usual price. So this is a real, uh, real issue. The second uh, thing, the second question that we were afraid of was how will the public react? So our, our final price for this project was 90,000 pounds. And this is a huge amount of money when creating websites in Croatia, and we couldn't use the statement that for this kind of work, we usually would get paid two and a, uh, two and a half times uh, higher price than we did for, for the city of Rijeka. So, so basically, we were being underpaid, and the, the public will react like they are really angry at us because we did uh, and we, get, we got that, that job. We were also afraid of the professional community reaction because of uh, disclosing this entire process, going with the open design blog, open sourcing everything. And we, we got one question asking, what will happen to the companies that are currently developing and designing websites for local governments, for institutions? When you do that, that is basically free and anyone can use it in their own, in their own uh, web. Uh, but general uh, professional community reaction was extremely positive and we were really happy about it. And of course, the, the final question, is this enough of a budget? So our process for this project was uh, put in four stages. The analysis stage, design stage, HTML stage, and WordPress stage. And what we tried to do was some sort of agile design approach, which means that if you put aside the first stage, the analysis stage, in every stage after that, we could make changes 
where, wherever at, and whenever we, we want it if these changes helps our users. So everything was open for, for change. And it was definitely important to always communicate and innovate in the, in the later stages as well. So our first, first process was analysis. We started with analyzing current content, so we spent practically around three weeks analyzing current content and doing all uh, other sort of stuff. And my idea, so when Ant uh, uh, said a couple of words before I, I came to stage, uh, he said that I was from Rijeka. I'm not from Rijeka, I'm from Pula, living in Zagreb and working for Rijeka. And I practically moved to Rijeka for two months to be able to work with them on site every day. So we basically, through all the meetings, uh, every day so we could really analyze content so we could uh, build better information architecture and so on and we basically structured this content in couple of couple of groups like news information like addresses telephone numbers the people the, the things that people usually search on a website and the special part was topics for citizens and these topics were structured into sections like family, culture, sports, education, economy, and so on. And this, this topics for the citizens was our key content because usually when you are developing a website for a political party or a local institution or a local government, they want to have news on top of everything. They are not building the website to promote their ideas. They are building a website to have news to, uh, so the people could know uh, what did they do uh, yesterday and what are they doing today. So this is all the uh, website for all the wrong, all the wrong reasons. Uh, and this content that we were developing basically was written from scratch. They didn't have this content written before. So this, is, uh, this was a really giant step in all that. And we did a lot of interviews, not only with citizens, but with other cities as well. So remember, we said that we are building a platform, so we asked Association of Croatian Cities to help us set up a workshop and to see what... Uh, um, in the meantime, we created personas and tested user flow. So this is maybe not the standard process that you are usually using when creating a website, uh, but we just wanted to see how our content behaves in this sort of situation. So one, one of my favorite personas was a young dad that is trying to inscribe his uh, kid into kindergarten. So in, I'm not, I don't know how is uh, things with that going here in UK, but in Croatia you have only one month in which you can inscribe uh, or register, I not, not, don't know what word to use, uh, your, your kid to kindergarten. Only one month per year. And this information w were not disclosed on the website at all. And at the end we built some wireframes and tested some more. Uh, and these wireframes, which is uh, something that I'm really proud of, was showed to people at a special workshop. So uh, around three, three, around, I don't know, 30 or 40 people said they are interested in uh, going to that workshop. And we basically grouped them and showed them wireframe, explained them uh, how uh, are we going to uh, show them the content on the future website. And the second process was design. So in the design phase, we focused on key templates only, and we built on it in only one resolution. And this was a desktop resolution. So sometimes this is a problem, because you don't, you, you want to show clients uh, how will their website look on the mobile devices, on a tablet device, and so on. But we got some sort of trust between us and Rijeka, so they said, hey, okay, you are, you are the bosses, we just want uh, to create a, a good website for our citizens. So we could design only in one resolution, and this way we could lower expenses at the end. So uh, we could work within this budget to create a good website that would uh, work for their citizens, and we, although we did get underpaid we did uh, a job and uh, we did uh, something that uh, Rijeka really appreciated. And we were open for iterations if it helps our users. So this is the current website for the city of Rijeka. 
you can see a lot of information in this part. So this is basically news, these are banners. If you want to search something, and remember that Rijeka was the most transparent city three times in a row, but even on their own website, they realized that the citizens cannot get information. If you're an investigative journalist, you could get the information because the information was on that website. But if, if you were a citizen searching how to inscribe your kid into kindergarten, kindergarten, you wouldn't find that information really easy. So we proposed a new design. This is uh, the home page. Uh, everything uh, is done within WordPress with a lot of uh, information architecture built just uh, inside it. So for example, the things that uh, we did uh, is the, the giant um, navigation on, at the top of every page, which basically will stick to the top of the website when you are uh, going through the website, going to uh, sub pages. And one of the things is this part here. So these are the quick link section that can be changed depending on what do you want to promote in uh, some parts of the year. So if you are uh, promoting the registration for children for the kindergartens, you could uh, have that uh, in that section. And on the bottom part, also uh, a quick link section to the most important key content of the website. And on the uh, right, uh, right side of the, the web, there was information that is usually hidden somewhere below, and this is the address, uh, and this is the telephone numbers that the people use to call and contact their, their, uh, their city. And I just want to show you a quick, uh, uh, a quick uh, template for the topic section. So these are topics uh, based on uh, the things that uh, are interesting to citizens. And when you go uh, in some topics, you get the information that is rewritten from scratch all over again with some key points on that. In HTML, we said everything should be responsive. We didn't define any breakpoints because we believe that uh, every content acts differently on every resolution. So if we see that the content should break at 400 pixels, then we are going to put a breakpoint there. If we see a content that is breaking at 500 pixels, we are putting a breakpoint there. Uh, and again, we are always focusing on users, so if we see that a design change could uh, make something better for them, we are changing it. Nevertheless, we didn't define that in the first stage, uh, sorry, the second stage when we did design. And for the WordPress, uh, our main idea was to use WordPress administration because they are used to it, but for that people, that employees of the city of Rijeka that maybe are not that good in uh, computers, we want to optimize the administration to remove the elements that don't help them. And we want to make everything easy to use and error proof, so there were no errors by using that administration. The important thing is that content should be interconnected. So uh, above all that, we uh, have uh, a dozen uh, custom post types, for example, for addresses, for telephone numbers, for employees. So we can basically change that in the process. If the employees change the position, we just say he's not on that position anymore. And a special focus was put on transparency information like budget, like taxes, like a uh, way of contacting your representatives. And for example, one of the custom post type was the whole part for the representatives. So uh, you could see how representative uh, acted during the years. So if someone is representative for two mandates, so this is around eight years, you could see what questions did he ask uh, and how he represented you. But there were, of course, problems. As I said, we got less than we usually get paid. We got unexpected setbacks. So, for example, we, pr uh, we, we, were, we decided to go with analysis uh, stage for only a week, but at the end we worked on that for three weeks, so we didn't get paid for two weeks. Uh, also, there was more work than expected. 
we couldn't get into budget to write blog posts and some strategic documents. And after the process is over, we will have two strategic documents that were never published in Croatia before. So one is content strategy guidelines for the public service and the other are accessibility guidelines. Uh, we wanted to, to create those nevertheless. And the benefits are a lot because WordPress is now more recognized that, than it was before. And everything will uh, eventually be open sourced and other cities can, can come to that and use it free of charge. They can lower costs and this especially goes with smaller cities and the smaller cities in Croatia have around 10,000 uh, citizens. So this is a truly a remarkable thing that we could do. Citizens were involved and listened, so we asked them a lot of questions, we listened to their answers, we uh, even added value for the community, citizens and government this way. Uh, one of the things was educational conferences, and educational conference, this wasn't planned, but in the process we just uh, pick up the phone and talk to uh, professionals for copywriting, SEO, industry, from social media industries and the accessibility, so we got this people on the same stage and they were talking to the employees of Rijeka and helping them understand what changed in the web since the 90s. And one of the greatest benefit for us and for the community is uh, getting work in Croatia to, to Rijeka uh, the last year and we got a tremendous support from the city because we got the venue for free, uh, we got a lot of support, for example, the last week we lost the contributor day venue, so City of Rijeka said, hey, why, why, won't you, why, won't, why don't you host that in a city hall? So we did that. In the, end, in the end, I think that politicians should leave their comfort zones, as we all uh, should do as well, because this is what the leaders do uh, if they want to make a better future for, for their nation and their citizens. Um, why are we doing this? We should uh, lead and not expect someone else to lead. And that way we are setting the standard. And this sort of a project is really uh, sometimes that come a couple of times in your lifetime and you should just stick to it and work on it because it helps you to build a character. And at the end, we, we are, as a designer, we want to uh, make the world a better place. And one last thing. I want to look myself in the mirror one day and I want to say this little kid that I did everything I could to uh, make him a better future. So, thank you. I was really very beautiful and inspiring. Thank you very much, Manuel. Do we have questions from the floor at this stage? I had a few I could start off with, but... Oh, we do have questions from the floor. Good. I don't. Mine was a silly question anyway. So, I'll... hi. Thank you for a very inspiring talk. Thanks. Uh, you talked about personas and user flows, and I thought it was a great idea. Uh, but I was wondering, do you also open source those? Uh, no. Uh, this is part of the process that we j just basically did uh, at the site with them. We didn't document those uh, very well because we were thinking of what, uh, what benefit could we gain from, from that or from other things. So we focus on, I don't know, open sourcing the content strategy and accessibility guidelines and not the personas because this is something that agencies in Croatia do for larger scale projects anyway. So we didn't want to, yeah. Okay, do we have another question from the floor? Oh, yes, we do, towards the back there. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, you mentioned you're instructing um, content managers uh, how to do accessibility, uh, how to implement that. What are the three main things you tell them? Uh, can you be a little bit... The, what were the three uh, main um, accessibility pieces of advice that... You give the content managers. Okay. Um, well, the, the idea of accessi bring accessibility, so uh, if you were talking about that educational conference that we did, so somehow we got connected with um, a blind association in Croatia by, by chance. And we asked them, hey, we are doing this project and we want to, to help you get a better web experience. And the problem in Croatia is that people are not involved in that. People that create content like uh, people from, employees from Rijeka didn't realize what are the problems that blind per, uh, person is having by uh, just using their website. 
So we asked uh, 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 one uh, blind gentleman to come over and to explain and to show them what are their problems. So this was uh, our main goal for, for that educational conference. And uh, regarding accessibility, we're basically trying to build uh, this whole uh, web platform, web platform experience to be as much as, as accessible uh, as generally WordPress is. Further questions from the floor? Oh, we do have more. Yes, just that gentleman there. So with the city website, do you have people who are not very technical who have to maintain that website? Yeah. And how do you make it easy for them to continually maintain it? Because if they're not very technical, how do they you know, understand So we are, we are creating a one-day educational workshop after everything is done. We expect them to have a couple of people that are more technical who can uh, then help them within the, within the city. And the main goal is to create, I don't know, a user, uh, user profile for, for that sort of uh, people that will basically remove everything that is not necessary for them to, to use the administration. So this is our general idea to do that. So we are, this is still a work in progress. We are uh, around months away from delivering it and uh, publishing it. Yes, yeah, I'll just uh, bring this over. Thank you for that talk. You talked by early on about the transparency measurements. Has you seen those increase and get better since you produced this website? So, uh, as I said, this is not finished yet. It will oh, okay. be in, in, in a month. But th the idea is that people got a lot of quench questions. For example, how can they open a company in Rijeka? What are the steps that they should do? And this sort of information on the old website was uh, something that you couldn't find easily. And uh, when talking about transparency, uh, I think that Rijeka is maybe the only city in Croatia that uh, publishes their budget in a way that could be easily, uh, uh, I don't know how to, to say, uh, but uh, let's say that you want to, to create some sort of business intelligence of a budget, Rijeka is one of the few cities that do that in a way that you could do that. And uh, this goes, uh, for example, on um, this uh, part that, that when I talked about two-way communication. So now two-way communication works that you basically pick up your phone and call someone. And this uh, someone is usually the main operator that basically after that just uh, sends you in a, in a right direction. We want to change that. So when you have a problem, for example, with uh, traffic, uh, you just go to that part of the website and you get the information just for, for you. So this is uh, sort of a thing that we are trying to build to, to uh, build a better transparency for the website. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned this already, but um, uh, how many people uh, have been working on this? How many in your team and, and how long has so it taken? Our team is, uh, my brother and me are working uh, as an agency. We have uh, a friend that is working with us. He's a really kick-ass WordPress developer. So basically two of us built everything and my brother was just a consultant on a couple of things like accessibility and uh, responsive mobile first approach and so on. And when did you start start on it? Uh, we started that uh, somewhere uh, in the July, I think, last year. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, thanks. But uh, you, you should uh, keep in mind that we didn't work for uh, on, on that project all the time because of uh, other issues. So, for example, we, we couldn't live with that uh, sort of money. And uh, the problem was that we didn't get paid still because uh, this is uh, something that will get when the work is over. So we got to, to work on other projects as well in this, in this period. Uh, the back there. I think this will have to be the last question, actually, because we're getting close to lunchtime and we don't want to be torn apart. I'll be quick. Thank you. Um, I'm from Bulgaria and we have probably the same, <laughs> the same problems with transparency and corruption and uh, with technology into governmental agencies. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, have you been approached by, or did you approach some other town to integrate this uh, platform in the future and do you expect it to be some kind of business? Because it sounds like something which can be developed. I personally don't, don't think that this should uh, 
be something that we will sell to, to other, other cities. Uh, I, yeah. If I get approached with uh, other city and asked to, to implement it, I would probably say no, because this is not something that uh, will uh, cover my bills at the end of the month. Uh, we worked uh, hard on that, uh, but we are aiming to help local agencies mm -hmm. build uh, uh, above all that. So okay. we are just uh, open sourcing everything, and I'm really happy to help. I uh, was asked by a couple of other cities, and I asked, uh, said that no, no problem, just give me a call. I'll call you when this is all over, and I will come over and explain why is this a benefit for you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, I think we'll have to wrap up the questions there. I kind of wanted a little question. So when you say you're open sourcing it all, this yeah. is uh, a custom theme? Yeah. And the customer. We're open sourcing everything. So okay. um, from I, I, the Photoshop files, Photoshop files are already on the GitHub. Okay, great. I guess we should all come yeah. to a split in September. Yeah, definitely. See the whole thing launched and get told how to implement it and all that. And you were in split, so it will be a good thing for you. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very Thanks. much, Emmanuel. Um, <laughs> that was great.